Wow, I can't believe spring is already almost here. I figured it's time for us to talk about the, uh, an update as to where things are going in regards to both real estate and mortgages. I know I'm getting a lot of uh, calls from various clients saying, hey, what's going on out there, Dan? So what I've done is I've actually created two uh, separate videos to, to address both issues in regards to mortgages. It's a little bit more convoluted than what many people realize. Uh, and I kind of, through the process of explaining where things are and where we possibly expect things to go, I've tried to explain to you guys how mortgages work for those that may not be uh, aware of them. You know, you know, breaking out the, the differences between fixed and variable mortgages. So I'm going to carry on with that momentarily. Uh, but for those of you that are in a bit of a rush, don't have a lot of time and are really interested in the mortgage update, uh, I'm going to post that down below in the um, newsletter so you can definitely check that out separately. On the flip side, real estate. I know some clients just really want to know what's going on with the real estate world, what's happening out there. I'm going to put that one separately as well. Again, uh, further in this video, for those of you that don't have time, definitely click that link and just dive right into the real estate side of things. Okay. Uh, on other business here, um, what do we got? We've got rent versus buy. I know a lot of clients are feeling very frustrated with the uh, high rental rates. On the flip side, they're also frustrated with the high mortgage rates and, of course, the high purchase prices. So I am going to be working on a video. I'm actually in the process of doing right now a little uh, presentation for those who may be interested or if perhaps you want to you know, uh, shed some light uh, for your children or friends or colleagues at work. I'm going to be posting that uh, hopefully in the near future. Uh, so stay tuned. Watch out for that. Uh, you know, One of the things I'm the most proud about in my many years of assisting people in buying and selling homes and acquiring mortgages is those who have been perhaps renting for many, many years. I've dealt with clients in their 50s and their 60s even who have spent most of their life uh, renting or circumstances have changed and put them back in the rental situation. And what I've learned over the years is that really home ownership makes so much more sense. It's, it's a great feeling being the master of your own lodging circumstances, not being reliant on others. So I'm definitely going to get into the rent versus own, and there's definitely a lot of different different uh, opinions on this. I'm going to give you the real estate mortgage uh, perspective based on the plethora of clientele I've worked with over the years. So again, stay tuned on that. Uh, one last thing, just for those of you that perhaps have forgotten, life gets busy, especially with spring, trying to get the house ready, is unfortunately, guys, it's tax season. So for many of you, I know I'm working on those. So if I haven't got around to talking to you and you want me to help you with your taxes again this year, please reach out to me. Um, you know, I'll post right here. Uh, the, our rates as to you know what I charge uh, clientele, and I'll post it further down in the newsletter. So by all means, you can check it out, share it with your friends, family, whoever, and it'd be my pleasure to assist them on that end. But without further ado, let's get into the mortgage and real estate update. Okay, let's talk about mortgage rates. Where are they heading? Are they going up? Are they going down? You know, what types of uh, mortgages can we deal with? Is it a good time to perhaps break our mortgage or not? Uh, these are the questions I'm constantly getting. And in order to answer these questions, I really have to explain to you a little bit about mortgages and the types of mortgages that are out there. They're not as straightforward as they have been in the past. So I'm going to take a few minutes here to kind of explain to you what's been transpiring in the mortgage industry. And through that, hopefully you'll get a bit of an understanding as to what's going on. So we're going to look in particular at the variable mortgage and how we get those type of mortgage rates and on the flip side the fixed mortgages they are both set differently and they don't they don't always work hand in hand with each other traditionally speaking over the course of my adult years we've typically gotten a bit of a discount on our variable mortgages for taking the risk that the rates may go up uh, unfortunately right now there's a lot of people predicting they're going to go down hence we're actually paying a bit of a premium for the variable rates uh, so let's kind of look at what's been going on here with the uh, Bank of Canada Central Central Bank. Uh, they're the ones that kind of set the, the what we call the overnight rate. Currently, that is at 4.5%. Uh, and then the the banks in general, like the TVs, the RBCs, the BMOs, they'll set their what they call their prime rate on top of the central bank's overnight rate. So right now, as I've indicated here, it's at 4.5. And as we have on the side here, it's at 6.7. They typically follow between 2 to 2.2% 2 .2 spread. So as the central bank drops the rates, they'll drop theirs accordingly, but I was staying about 2 to 2% 2 uh, above whatever the central bank's rates are. So right now, as you can see in the chart, you know, the rates are significantly there. Now, with the uh, inflation, there's a lot of talk about inflation and looking at this little chart here, it shows you, you know, traditionally speaking, the Bank of Canada has tried to keep inflation in around 2%. And we've done a really good job of it in past years, but unfortunately, uh, it just uh, shot up rather significantly, uh, more or less this time last year. So as you can see here, thankfully, it did shoot up to a high of 8.1%. Uh, but you know, with the 
significant rise in the uh, overnight rate uh, set by the central bank. We finally started to see it come down. And just today, I actually heard that we are down to about 4.3%. Still above the 2% target, but this is great news, which is why, as I showed in that previous slide there, the Bank Canada has finally stalled the uh, constant increases in the central rate. And it's done a kind of a, a wait and see approach, which I think is great news. Uh, and I'm hoping to see these numbers uh, drop even further. I know the predictions, as we indicated down here, is that next month we should see it drop down to 3.9. Um, keeping my fingers crossed, hoping that's exactly what transpires there. So now you have a bit of a sense for how the interest rates work uh, from you know the variable side. Um, we can kind of look at some of the mortgage rate sheets. So Marathon Mortgages is one of my uh, preferred uh, mortgage lenders. They often offer very competitive rates. I get these rate sheets all the time. Uh, so if you're looking here, you're going to see what we call the five-year arm adjustable rate mortgage. Now, we're going to talk in this case about the uh, adjustable or variable mortgages. There's some uh, nuances, differences between the two, a variable and an adjustable. But the point is, it does fluctuate as the central bank uh, adjusts the rates. So Right now, with this particular lender, for most mortgages, they're offering a 0.9% uh, discount if you are what we call high ratio, so an insured mortgage, um, or if you've got 35% or more in equity in the property. Now, that this is only for a purchase, or if you're switching from one lender to another, this is not for a refinance. Okay. Now, I've kind of highlighted a couple boxes in the screen here to show currently the prime rate. This this is the bank's prime rate is 6.7. Therefore, you'd get 0.9 off of that. You're looking at 5.8, which is, you know, where we've been for the last little bit uh, since the Bank of Canada last increased the, the prime rates to the 4.5. Hence, the banks all followed suit with a 6.7 uh, increase there. So that's kind of where we're at now. We have not really seen much in adjustments. There is some um, uh, speculation within the industry that we will start to see the Bank of Canada drop those rates, but not until inflation has shown to, uh, you know, subsided. Uh, it's really hard to say when this may happen. Some are hoping that the latter part of 2023, we might start to see uh, the central bank drop its rate, in which case you'll want to be on a variable. But keep in mind, you're still going to be at 5.8. So it'll be 6.7 will get reduced to, let's say, 6.5. And then you'll go from your 5.8, 5.9 down to you know 5.6 so you're still going to be quite high there on the flip side there's the fixed mortgages and traditionally speaking many canadians uh, like to have the fixed uh, the mortgages here so here the fixed mortgages work really more on the bond market you know where are the bonds selling at so recently bond values have dropped which has caused yields to go way up so in essence what that means is if you want to borrow um, money off a of bond you're gonna have to pay more to borrow that money which is why our fixed rates have gone up quite significantly right in line with the variable mortgages uh, however, as you can see in this little chart I've indicated here, we've started to see those bond rates drop a little bit or kind of flatline, uh, which is nice. And so, you know, this gives you a bit of a sense where things have gone uh, in the last, you know, well, several years. As you can see, the bond yields were super low, but now they've uh, increased quite significantly. Um, yeah. So going here, you know, when we look at the mortgage rate sheet, I've actually used the same letter in this case, and now I'm looking at the fixed side as opposed to the variable side. There's a few key items we look at. We look at term, uh, which means how long is this mortgage going to be? And as we can see here, I've highlighted we got the two year, three year, four year, and five year uh, terms. Unfortunately, uh, the lenders uh, are, are of the mindset that the rates are going to be going up. So they really would love for you to lock into a five-year rate. But of course, you don't necessarily want to do that if you think the rates are going to be going down. So in order to encourage people to get on board with a five-year rate, the lenders have finally started to drop those rates. And as you can see here, uh, you know we've got a 60-day rate hold of this particular lender, one of the best ones I've seen uh, in a very long time at 4.99 on, um, actually, sorry, a 4.44 on a five-year fixed uh, which is great I mean back around November December all of my five-year rates were over five percent so to see it come down this low and it's been dropping quite steadily uh, the thought process is that they have a lot of money in their system they're trying to get it out there and they want to get locked in for a five-year term that being said, a lot of people are coming to me and say, Dan, you know what? I think they're going to drop lower. Um, I don't want to pay the 5.7, 5.8 on the variable side. And I don't think the bank can is going to be dropping the rates in the next year or so. So I want to do a lock-in option based on the bond market. Unfortunately, as you can see in this chart here, the bond market is 
still charging in around um, uh, for a short term. Uh, this example here, and this is actually one of the better ones at 5.49 for a two year. Quite nice at the three year. So for a lot of my clients, we're opting to take that three year option so we can kind of get the, the best of both worlds, a little bit lower on the rate than the two year, but not as high as the variable for the time being. And that's kind of a tough one. People have to decide what they want to go with there. Uh, the other thing we look at is the, the equity. How much value is there in the home? So as I mentioned, if you've got 35% or more equity in the home, and that'll be done via an appraiser, an, uh, you know, an appraiser, not one you pick, one the lender picks, then you can get yourself a better rate than let's say you only had 10 or, or let's say 25% uh, value in the home. On the flip side, if you were uh, what we call high ratio mortgage, if you had the insurance, CMHC, Genworth, uh, mortgage insurance on the home, they'll give you the exact same rate as the person who has 35% or more equity. The reason being is that the lenders are not as concerned about losing money on the mortgage. Hence, they would prefer your piece of business versus somebody else. The more equity there is in the home or the fact that there's an insurance policy on the mortgage means that the lender most likely will not lose their money. Worst case scenario, you stop paying your mortgage payments, they will reach out to the insurer, call in and say, this is now your problem, you pay us back our money, hence utilizing that uh, premium. On the flip side, if you've got 35% equity in the home, they will foreclose in the house, they will sell it, but before any of their money starts to dissipate via perhaps a drop in value on the home or you know legal expenses real estate costs whatever else that will all come from the proceeds of the current owner's uh, home hence the 35 percent so there's that safeguard aspect to it there and then we've got the last thing is you know what we call the rate hold Typically, anything that the lender offers you in your favor, so the longer they'll offer you a rate hold, in this case a 60-day or a 90-day, they'll give you a better rate. Uh, part of the reason being is that lenders have uh, pools of money that they have to get out. They do not want to let it sit in their accounts. They want to get it lent out as quickly as possible. And so by doing um, to encourage people to uh, take on perhaps a quick 60-day uh, rate, they'll say, hey, here's your mortgage rate, uh, which they can't normally offer. Or in this case, uh, you know, 90-day, not quite as, as uh, attractive of a rate but not bad there you know we're looking just a measly 0.05 but these are some of the specials that we often uh, get to come across our desk as mortgage agents uh, so always a good idea to kind of keep me apprised of what you've got going on there and by all means we can you know if you want that peace of mind we can lock you into a you know with some lenders not this particular lender but other lenders we can do up to 120 day uh, lock-in and other clients say let's just hold on Dan and maybe we can take advantage of one of these 60 day rate holds okay uh, yeah, so when we're looking at the fixed versus the variable mortgages, uh, you know, outside of the interest rate, the other thing to consider is what are my payments going to be? So I've kind of read a couple of scenarios here just to give you a real life uh, example as to how this would play out. In both scenarios, I've gone ahead and assumed a 10% down the home. You're buying a house in around 500000 Hence, you're going to get yourself a mortgage of four fifty. Because it's less than 20% down, you are going to be responsible for paying the uh, CMHC or Genworth premiums. So I've indicated that kind of in the bottom right hand of this screen here. So you're looking at a total mortgage of 463950 The payments on something like that would be 2932 on a variable, assuming a 5.8% uh, rate, which is more or less one of the more competitive rates uh, being offered. This is a five-year rate uh, to get something like that. Uh, now, keep in mind, even though that may sound like a lot, you're paying 2932 uh, you are actually paying down that mortgage quite significantly. So at the end of the five-year period, your mortgage will go from 463 down to 416 So you've paid off quite a bit by taking advantage of that, um, you know, buying a home as opposed to perhaps renting. So at 2932 I have another calculator that can do a great job of showing you how much of that 2932 is actually going towards principal. Roughly speaking, it's about a third of it is going towards principal. That does fluctuate as time goes on. And by all means, you know, reach out to me and I can show you other calculators that show that. On the flip side, clients say, well, you know what, Dan, I don't want to pay a 5.8. That's a really high. And yeah, I don't think it's going to be dropping. So on the flip side, I've got another scenario here taking the five-year rate. And I do know some clients are in a situation now where they just can't keep up the payments. You know, that's an extra, you know, in this case, we're looking almost $400 difference by going with the five-year versus the variable. So if that's your situation, you're having a hard time keeping up with your payments, give me a call. Perhaps we can switch you to another lender, get you into a five-year fixed, and it's still not the best rate, but that being said, it's not always about rate. It's about what are my monthly obligations. If you have $400 more in your pocket that you can enjoy spending time with your family and loved ones and just enjoying life in general, going to the baseball games and out on the weekends, then perhaps that's a better option for you. 
But as we indicated in the previous one there, uh, your mortgage at the end of the term will be uh, you know, um, actually lower as well. So that's another one of the advantages by you know, going with the lower, you know, the higher rate. That being said, keep in mind, the 5.8 on the variable may drop as the Bank of Canada finally starts to drop rates next year, whereas you know, it's highly, on, well, you won't be changing this rate. You will be stuck at these payments for the duration of the five years. Uh, nice thing is you will know at the end that your mortgage will be at 407, as we indicated on the bottom right-hand side there. Uh, so that's one of the nice advantages of going with a fixed rate. You kind of know how things are going to play out for the next five years. So there's no if and what's uh, about it. So there you have it. Fixed versus variable. Where are they going? We're not entirely sure, uh, but that's kind of the, the inside scoop as to where we think things are going to go. Uh, this does change from week to week, month to month, depending on things like I mentioned, the um, the inflation numbers. So by all means, if you're kind of curious, you got a mortgage coming due, you have a friend who's got something coming due, give me a call and I'll give you my two cents, let you know where I think things are going. And like I said before, it's not always about the rate. It's often, for many of my clients, more about their monthly obligation. So we need to talk about this. If you're going to be in a bit of a spot rather than foreclosing on your home, perhaps that's where you got to give me a call, and we can see if there's some options available for you. There are a lot more other options available outside this. This is just our fixed and our variable. Uh, and in both cases, I've gone ahead with a 25-year amortization. But there are a plethora of other options that we can do. We can extend these mortgages over a longer period of time uh, and see how those numbers work out. Hope this is helpful. All right, let's talk about real estate. What is transpiring in the real estate world? For many of you, you may have uh, read the recent March update. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you a number of articles and some of the stats that we go over on a consistent basis here at Peak Realty to hopefully give you a, a glimmer as to what's going on out there. So just bear with me, I'm gonna share the screen here. Um, there we go. Okay, so as you can see in the most recent update from the Waterloo Regional uh, Area uh, Real Estate Board, we have indicated that the uh, home prices appear to be inching up, and that's definitely the case. Uh, we've noticed over the year, as uh, and as I've talked about already, mortgage rates dropping uh, has caused I, more and more buyers to be able to afford more, I'm a little bit more comfortable with assuming a bit more of a mortgage, and I believe that's one of the big reasons as to why people are getting in uh, back in the real estate market and buying homes, hence causing those prices to start to inch back up there. That and the realization that unfortunately, you know, they are paying a lot in rent every single month. And if you look at over the course of a year, if you're paying 2,500, you know, on a monthly basis, that's $30,000 and you really have nothing to show for it. And then of course, on the flip side, you know, as time goes on, those rents are most likely going to continue to go up uh, based on a minimum inflation. And if you do happen to be evicted by a landlord, it could go up a lot uh, more significantly than that. Whereas uh, the mortgages, as you're paying down, down that mortgage, um, you know, depending on what kind of mortgage you have, uh, assuming it's a fixed mortgage, the principal portion will increase and the interest you're paying will decrease over time. I'm going to be, again, uh, bringing out a little video to kind of walk clients through the pros of renting versus buying. But uh, uh, there's what we have for the time being. Now, this is the report here, and as you can see, here's kind of our year-over-year -year average sales. What's quite interesting about this is that we find that our 2023 numbers are really quite close to our 2021 numbers. You know, it depends on certain areas. Our condo prices are still showing quite a bit higher. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll post this information down below in my newsletter so you can kind of dive into it a little bit more uh, carefully if you would like. Uh, one thing I really appreciate, uh, just before I get into that, uh, you know, as many of you are aware, we just saw a massive spike, you know, this time more or less last year, and we definitely did a significant drop off of that. Uh, but as you can see in the recent months with spring coming back around, and I, I believe again, the mortgage rates uh, starting to drop at least on the fixed side, not so much the variable side, as the central bank has not dropped the rates at all, unfortunately. Uh, but the fixed side, you know, uh, it's helping clients a little bit there. Um, for those of you that didn't get a chance, definitely check out the mortgage side. And I've gone and explained kind of how those payments uh, often it's not about what my purchase price is, but what's my monthly obligation. So definitely check into that. But looking at peak realty here, we do tend to uh, monitor a number of different market uh, places here. We got Durham, Great Bruce, Guelph. So if you'd like to discuss any of the stats regarding any of these regions, by all means, reach out to me and it'd be my pleasure to uh, dive into that. I don't really have time to get into everything. 
And I do find often what's transpiring in one market is very similar to what's happening in others as far as percentage points. Of course, the the, the sale prices are going to be different, but the percentages are going to be very similar to each other. OK, so we're looking here. I'm really paying the most attention to what's been transpiring uh, year to date. And as you can see, January, you know, our, our low for the most part was back in December. Now, this particular chart is all property types. So this is inclusive of condos, townhouses, detached homes, semi-attached homes, just to give you a rough feel for where things are. And as you can see, December, we definitely saw the biggest drop. We were just under 700,000 for the average sale price across the uh, the region there. Oh, this is uh, or across Kitchener, Waterloo, but Cambridge, Primrose Falls, and Sioux. Same thing with Wilmot Township and uh, Woolwich and North Dumfries too. Uh, now, as you can see, we started to creep up there and March, we definitely started to see a little high, but April, and this is where it kind of diverges a little bit from our uh, our Waterloo Real Estate Board um, update. Uh, the, the update from the board is for the entire month. We tend to break it down, you know, uh, week by week as we go here. And so hence our April thus far is showing on the low side. But if you'll know something else here, over on the right-hand side, we've got a section we call list of sale ratio, kind of highlighted it there for you. Um, what that is, is, you know, assuming you have a list price of say 500,000, you know, if you sold at exactly the list price, you're gonna have 100% uh, uh, list of sale ratio, hence 500,000. If you sell above that, it's gonna be a higher percentage. If you sell lower than that, uh, lower. And so as you can see, you know, back uh, last year in 2021, we were, selling our homes quite often for quite a bit above the uh, the list price of course in many cases we did also under list these homes which would explain you know why uh, we were selling them you know at one point here up to 30 percent on average for the entire month you know back to february of last year but again if we were under listing by 100 200 you know i saw as much as 500,000 under list you know so uh, keep that in mind that strategy stopped working as time went on. Uh, you know, more and more people just, they were getting offers, they were going above list, but they just weren't going high enough which, uh, to the disappointment of the sellers. So we started kind of getting away from that strategy, going to what I refer to often as a more traditional uh, means of selling homes. We relist it and we try to sell it in around the, the, uh, the, the, the list price. So as you can see, you know, we've been doing a little both strategies, the real estate agents on the whole, but definitely our percentages have been dropping uh, recently to the point that actually around November, December, our average sale price is we're coming in, you know, more or less 1% under the uh, the list price. Again, keep in mind, every situation is different, and I'm definitely having to advise clients as to where uh, homes are listed and what the strategies are. But once again, we're starting to see those creep up. So the, uh, April to date, we're actually showing thus far a 5.3% above list price, average sale price in the area, which tells me that really we're getting back to that old strategy of underselling homes. But on the flip side, I'm also showing a drop in the sale price. So talking over with my colleagues uh, and whatnot there, you know, the, the sentiment uh, amongst us is that uh, many of the homes that are listed in the lower price ranges are doing exceptionally well. I've been hearing about offers at 21, 15, 26. Uh, they're doing quite well and hence they're going above list price. On the flip side, our higher priced homes, um, you know, there's just as, not as many people looking to buy those homes. Uh, you know, perhaps uh, I suspect a big part of it is affordability. And it's also a needs versus desire or want situation. And I think that's part of the equation here too. As I mentioned earlier, people that are renting uh, are throwing out a lot of money every single month. It seems like it just keeps going higher and higher and higher. So they're starting to come to that realization we need to buy. And unfortunately, there's a lot of them. So they're all competing for that same group of homes. And being that they're renters, they don't typically have a lot of money down. So they're often you know, dealing with homes you know, anywhere from, you know, 400,000, 300,000 to let's say 800,000. Once we start getting into the million, 1.2, 1.4, you know, now we're dealing with typically people that have some equity from other homes and there's just a, a little bit less competition there. Again, I'm still hearing about situations. I just heard one the other day, this is 1.5 uh, million getting a ton of action. That being said, it's probably more like a $1.8 million home. So please keep this in mind. I always good to reach out to me and I can give you uh, a perspective on what's going on there. But uh, anyways, hopefully that's helpful as you uh, you know ascertain you know, where valuation is going. You know, yes, we're seeing the values dropping, but it's just most likely we're selling uh, more of our lower-priced homes, which is why we're showing that percentage point uh, higher there. 
Um, yeah, days on market, they are selling uh, quicker, which is kind of nice. We're starting to see that start to drop off. And uh, yeah, as you can see, DOM, days on market. So it, around November, December, it was getting quite high, but we're back down to around 25 days on average, which is quite nice to see here. And if you go on to more of a weekly analysis, there's kind of our, our breakdown. As I said, this is a bit of a, of a drop there, which is a bit of a surprise for April. April, we're definitely on the downside. Uh, just to give you a sense for what's going on out there, uh, I, what I've done is I've actually gone to the system to show you two um, scenarios. So first I've gone ahead and listed our, or indicated here, all the listings uh, from the lowest list price in the last few weeks. And just to give you a sense, and if over here on the right, you'll see, or sorry, on my, my left, um, what's called P or pending. That means the house is sold, it's a firm uh, deal. The CA means canceled. And as you can see in our lower price ranges, as I'm scrolling here, very few are canceled, or in this case, they've expired the listing, or some kind of times they've suspended. But the vast majority are selling, and as you can see, you know, often selling above the list price. You know, I'm not going to go through these all in detail. By all means, if you're in a position where you'd like to buy a home or want to get a bit more of a sense for where, th where things stand, uh, reach out to me because there's just so much uh, material to uh, review. In this situation uh, that I've gone ahead and looked at, I'm just looking at the freeholds uh, left out the condos, but by all means, uh, we can definitely dive into that. So as we uh, review things here, going into the higher price ranges, and as you can see at the end of this uh, page, I'm at 675, and you know, we're still doing quite well. You know, lots of homes selling, most of them, but you start to see a little bit more cancellations creeping in as we get closer to that $800,000 range. Okay, and now we're going into the eight, 800000 plus. Again, lots of pendings, you know, mid eights, high eights. But again, as I get into those high eights, I'm seeing a little bit more, you know, uh, cancellations and, ex and uh, you know, expulsions. And it's a case, too, that sometimes, you know, they may have had offers, just the offers weren't to the expectations of the sellers. And the sellers, for whatever reason, may, may not need to sell. You know, if they get the price that they're looking for, they will sell. But otherwise, they're quite willing to, um, you know, just see how things play out there. As we get into the million dollar range, you start to see that the cancellations really start to pick up a lot more. You know, we're looking at this point, I would say close to 50% are, are just not selling. And, you know, I'm going up to 1.6 because, again, we don't have as many homes uh, at those price ranges. Now, another way to look at things is uh, just look at how long they've been on the market. So in this situation here, we've got an area called DOM, Days on Market. And what I'm looking at here is, you know, what are our list prices? You know, some of these uh, are lower, but the vast majority of them that have been sitting, so days on market are longer, you know, we're in the million dollar range, okay? But as I flip into the, the lower price range or sort of less days on market, you start to see the prices start to drop. So initially I've got a lot of stuff just kind of sitting there, whatever, I'm just gonna kind of jump ahead to uh, you know the next four four pages here. So these are on the market six days or less. Now keep in mind one of the strategies is to hold off offers for a week. So that doesn't mean the house is not selling. It's just that most likely it's not come up to offer date. Okay. And at this point in time we have a lot more houses uh, that are just you know at this point about to sell. So, so again good to look at the actual sales, see what's going on there. And um, yeah the only other thing I would like to kind of mention to you guys um, is another sheet as we look at you know our home selling you know above list or below list uh, whatever is going on there I do we do have like a weekly report that we also go over and let's share with that with you uh, real quickly here and again this does change every week but I do find it quite uh, enlightening okay so currently, as of this week, and this is a weekly report, we have 532 uh, listings. And uh, is there an active last week, 509. So we all, we're getting a few more listings. Makes sense this time of year, we have more and more homes come on the market. And last year, this time we're at 520. So very much in line with uh, the same number of listings uh, out there. Um, However, more interesting is you know what's been selling. So over the last seven days, we've had 155 listings um, uh, sorry, uploaded in the last few days, uh, up from 180 again. But the, last year we were doing 228. So we are definitely seeing less homes uh, selling than what we had in the past. Uh, one thing we want to pay attention to is, you know, uh, as I indicated, are oh, they selling above list price? So in this situation here, we've got eight that sold at list price, um, 42 below list price, so about 35% of what was sold, and then 70 so, uh, sold or 58% um, sold above list price. Again, very interesting. Last year this time, 92% uh, of all of our listings actually sold above list price. So we are seeing that creep up, but not uh, nearly as drastic as what, what it was last year. 
um, done a little below the list price. So about 41% or 42% uh, have sold below the uh, the list price there. And we've got a kind of a breakdown of the, uh, you know, what's been selling price wise. Uh, very interesting here. We had one in the last week, so 200,000 above list. Obviously that's a rarity, not uh, nearly as common. Mind you, if I would have shown the same charts uh, last year, I probably had would have had, well, probably 15, 20 for the week. Like it was quite crazy uh, this year, this time last year. And then, you know, between 150 and 200,000, 400 to 150, 15, and then between 15 and 127. So be cognizant of the fact that people are under listing uh, homes. You know, we don't want to waste anybody's time. Uh, again, that's where you really want to have a professional uh, that has access to the data can kind of walk you through the process there. And then, as you can see, uh, sold at less than 20,000 over that uh, list price. We've got about nine, you know, within this, this range here. OK, but keep in mind, we had 50 uh, or 35 percent sold below list price. So every, houses are selling all over the place. OK, hopefully that's helpful. If you have any uh, questions, by all means, feel free to you know email me, text me or give me a call. It's always good to hear from my past clients. If you have anybody that's been contemplating buying a home, have them give me a call. If they're looking at renting, the rental market, we are really taking off. It seems like more and more people are opting to have uh, agents take care of that. So if you need any assistance in either finding a rental or um, you know, getting tenants in your place, by all means, reach out to me. It'd be uh, my pleasure to assist in that regard. And perhaps always a good idea to kind of review the mortgage options and see what can you get. You know, it doesn't make sense. Rent versus own. You know, sometimes you might get, be able to get a bit more home on the rent side, but keep in mind the, at the long term plan. You know, I find that a lot of tenants, you know, say, oh, I'm only going to rent for a year or two, but, you know, in the long run, I'm going to get myself a, a home. And that one or two years, I've seen it numerous times, turns into three years, five years, 10 years. Uh, and part of the problem is the home prices keep going up. What I would recommend typically is to take the money that you plan on saving and instead Instead of putting that towards. So if you know that you're going to be paying $2,500 in rent and you're going to be perhaps putting aside $500 or $1,000 into uh, savings towards buying that future home, it may make sense just to go ahead and buy that home now so that you don't have to worry about the, the home going up in value. Because keep in mind, a home goes up, you know, even say 4%. On a five hundred thousand dollar home, that's twenty thousand dollars growth in the value of the home. So just to even stay at par, you have to save up twenty thousand dollars. Let alone reducing the, the mortgage. That's been a real problem for a lot of people. But again, give me a call. I can walk you through uh, that whole process there. Or if you have friends, family, coworkers, again, it'd be my pleasure to assist them. All right, have yourself a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Wishing you all the best. Have a very enjoyable spring.